Hello, welcome back. We're going to apply these modifiers, but we're going to leave solidify as a modifier because if we have an interior surface, it really makes uh, it absolutely miserable to paint. So then we're going to map it to the bones with an automatic weight. And right away, we already have something that shifts. But we have some serious problems with pop through. We already have some wrinkles that look OK, but our pop through is miserable. So we're going to have to fix that. Uh, and the first step in this is not actually fixing the pop through, but fixing these two bones here. These are to control the bounce and sway of the coat, and as you can see, they're they're bound to the wrong part of the coat. They're bound to the upper sections of the coat when they need when they need to be bound to the lower sections. So we're going to switch over to paint mode, and we are going to clear out what it's currently mapped to, like so. For some reason, the X mirror has been turned off again. Turn it back on. We don't. And the same for the front. Boom. All right, so now we can paint that stuff with what it should be painted for, which is uh, something like that. And now we need to be a little bit careful when we do this painting because it'll fall through and paint the backside unless you've got the normals turned on. So with the normals on, if I do this and look on the back, it didn't take. But if the normals have been turned off, and I do that, you can see that it painted the backside. So that's that's not good. Um, another thing you need to make sure of is that your X mirror is turned on, because otherwise you'll be painting one side of the coat and not the other. And I've found that sometimes the X mirror doesn't work unless you have topology mirror turned on, and other times it doesn't work if you have topology mirror turned on. So keep your eye on that and use whatever is best for your particular needs. Now this is something you can do quite easily with a mouse. You don't need to use um, a pen or anything. Uh, you can if you'd like, but the mouse, uh, in this case, we want to have very strong. Um, um, we want to have very strong edges, so it works fine with just the mouse. And with that done, what we can do is we can we can actually rotate this, and you can see that it swings. See, and similarly, it bounces. And if we were to scale it down, or scale it, yeah, scale it down, scale Y, yeah, scale Z. Well, that one's not not working very well with that particular one, but that's okay. We'll fix fix that later. It's useful in certain certain aspects. But you can see that this is what we'll do to control the swing of the jacket. Now back here, we need to map this guy. So map him to the base as well. So just shoop, same as before. That's an unusual. Oh, I see. Sometimes you'll forget exactly where your wrinkles are, and you know, just need to fix them up. You can see that we are no longer being properly X mapped. If we turn on the X topology mirror, no, it still didn't help any. So the X, uh, X the X mirroring is not 100% reliable, uh, and I'm not sure why that is, um, but it is a little bit annoying at times. It doesn't really matter for cloth, but it does matter a lot for bodies. If you have a body that's not mapped correctly, it's going to be a real pain in the butt. All right, so now we can test that, and you can see that that works fine. We have a situation where we have some bulges going on, so we can actually just reduce those bulges. You could use the blend tool or something, but I find that this works just fine. Bam, 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 bam. Just knock it down. That'll do. It does not have to be perfect, and in fact, if it's not perfect, that's great. You don't actually need it to be perfect. There we are. Oh, did I not turn keys on? Start here. There. Uh, when you hit Alt R, you you fix the rotation. Just in case you're wondering. So here you can see that you can also scale this, and by doing so, you can really change how it's bouncing, and that'll work great for later on. But there are some other things we need to do, and one of them is to clear out this part because uh, this is a big part of our issue and if we were to rotate we would see this you see how it falls through that's because this is painted with a different set of weights so we just need to tilt it and then clear until it is properly on top of the skin and it doesn't look like it's going to be properly on top of the skin it looks like there is 
some deeper error happening here. So that means there's another bone somewhere that ha also has it assigned, and we have to find, oh, yeah, we have to find it, or maybe not, maybe it's, No, that's not it. I guess it's probably is those bones. So there we are. That's more or less correct. And that also means that when we bend far enough, um, we're definitely still getting fall through. Mm, maybe I have to just increase the density on this bone. Oh. Oh, um, you're probably going to want to turn on restrict. No, no, not restrict. Um, oh, I guess it. Oh, here it is auto normalize. If you don't have auto normalize on, Unity can malfunction pretty badly. So turn to auto normalize on, and you can see that that fixed most of our problems. But that does mean that we no longer have a heavy binding here with the front and the back. We've got a much lighter binding. That's okay. It's up to you how you want to play it um, and what you can deal with here. But uh, when we look at this, we can see that there are some curves that have that should be forming wrinkles that aren't. So what we need to do is we need to draw those wrinkles in. And we've already got the wrinkles planned. We just need to draw them. So let's go ahead and draw them, which means take a low density brush, hit Z to turn on your um, uh, turn on your uh, map here, and then just lower the density along one of these lines. And now go down to this guy and raise the density on the same line. And that will create a wrinkle. Of course, in this case, we have a problem where the line below that is not. We, we should, we're trying to sandwich it, uh, sandwich a layer of, uh, of line. So this is us adding in some control so that we can remove the control on the line above it and get a good wrinkle out of it. There we are. And here, that should work. So you can see that we now have a wrinkle. And it works perfectly fine in both directions, and it automatically happens. And we do have some fall through with the with the uh, hip, and we it's our option as to what we want to do with that. Um, we have a couple of, of possibilities here. Uh, but the wrinkles are always going to fold in, which is why this layering is such a difficult thing to do. And normally what I'll end up doing is deleting chunks of, uh, I'll, I'll make a custom mesh, a custom body mesh for each major piece of clothing and uh, I'll actually just hollow it out and modify it so that it doesn't pop through. But there's a lot of other ways to handle that, which we will eventually get to. So here is, you can see, we've got a situation where our um, these guys here are causing a problem where they follow along to this upper body quite badly, and it ends up causing issues down here. And you've got a lot of, pro you've got a lot of, of ways you can try and fix that. Uh, and the biggest way you can try and fix that is um, uh, to understand what sort of animations you're going to want to do. The whole reason that our that these things actually go all the way down there is specifically so that our animations can use this sway. So if we were going to animate something where we would, where we're doing something like this, we would then counter animate with the front like this, and that would allow us to get. Uh, all of the pop that we, all of the curves that we need, without actually having any of the um, pop through. So there we go. And so there, you can see that we've solved the pop through down there by making the cloth hang. And this is really what makes these systems work out perfect. Uh, the only key here is that because these are bone animations, if you're going to be swatch switching clothes out, you need to make sure that all of your clothes have the same weights, uh, so that I mean the same reaction, so that this exact posture will always result in this exact situation. And to do that, what you do is you make a couple of animations, and then you walk through the animations and adjust the weights accordingly. Um, we're not going to do that, but you can. It's very straightforward. 
Um, so now we have this issue where we have some fall through here, but that's not the fault of the animation or the weighting. That's the fault of it not being properly modeled. So we're just going to turn on X mirroring and pull that out. There you go. So what's next? Well, we want to make it so that our arm works out. And you can see that what, what happens here is that we have a lot of things that f that malfunction. We've got a malfunction up here, and we've got a malfunction down here. So I'm going to raise this arm. And therefore, what we can do is we can tweak it on the opposite end until it looks right. And that means that we just go bum, 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 bum. We can also select over here if we want to do it directly, but we need to be a little bit careful because it's easy to hit the sleeve itself, and we don't really want to hit the sleeve. We want to stick to the body here. So let's just clear out a lot of the body. There we go. Almost. There. Not quite. Is there a vertex missing somewhere? Oh, um, there. There we are. See, we got the sleeve there at the end. So that'll work, but we also want to add in uh, this. This sleeve shouldn't pull the uh, pull the hood down. Or pull the uh, shouldn't pull this thing down. So we're going to go ahead and depaint this so that it doesn't get pulled along with the sleeve, and that means that we'll have a much more natural seeming motion to the arm. There we go. And we also need to create a wrinkle which you should be pretty used to by now. All you have to do is pick one of these lines. I'm going to choose I'm going to choose this one and this one and you just reduce them. Oh, too much reduction. Just reduce them like this. And you can see that the whole point is that we're changing the distance between it and its neighbor. This is really really effective on textured objects. It's fairly effective on untextured objects, but it's really intended to be worked with a texture. Um, and I'm not going to be showing you that today, but it is definitely part of the basic idea. There you go. And there you go. We've got some textures. But you can see that when we put the, our, our arm over our head, we actually end up screwing that up. So we're going to select the upper arm area here, and we're going to change how this is painted so that we have so that we don't have any pop through. And by pop through, you can see that the arm and the down here, they both pop through. Um, so that means that we're going to be adding in some pop through here. I mean, sorry, adding in some weight here. No, 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 I have to add it here. No, no, where, where is it? Do I just need to be stronger? Is that was going on? No, I'm not sure. Well, we'll solve that in a second. Um, but we need to reduce the, pot, the the weight of it on this particular loop. Uh, there is no weight on that loop. So the problem is that it's just not um, not enough. I see. Uh, let's go ahead and add some on that loop then. So if we were to look at this guy, you can see how it does not go far enough down the arm. So we can add to that by going like this. And that'll give our upper arm some influence on the rest of the body. And you can see that we've made our situation much worse in terms of it popping through. And uh, it may be that this is something that I want to try and deal with off camera because I've already spent a fair amount of time here. But the basic idea is that we need to do increase the weight uh, in these particular areas until there's no more pop through, which isn't that hard. We, we Basically, we decrease the weight by too much, and we need to 
pull back on that until it uh, until it looks right here. And it may be that we also want to do some mesh changes. Uh, so let's just quickly go in and change some of these meshes around because I think that one of the issues is simply that the meshes are not ideal. So um, I believe it's this guy. Uh, yeah, it is. Okay. Just checking and seeing which loop it was. So if we take this guy and this guy. we pull them up, then we'll get a little bit of a more organic feel to our jacket, and, um, and we get a little bit closer to what we need. We may have to deal some more with this. Uh, like so. That's good enough. We'll deal with the rest later if we need to. All right. Of course, the chances of you wanting to raise your arm quite that high are pretty low. Normally, you'd want to combine it with combine it with an arm raise. So you do something like that um, with both of these bones working together. And as you can see, that works okay. But we have some underarm that needs to be gotten rid of because the underarm is being swelled, and that's just not what we want. So just take it out like so, and then here. So, there you go. All right, and of course, there is the elbow where you want to do the exact same thing we've done before and just move along the creases. Um, the, sub, the subsurface modifier has really reduced them in terms of how aggressive they are. So we're going to uh, just paint them right back in. Oh, that's way too, way too dense. Oh, fell through to the cloth. Try that again there, or the body rather. Oh, I should be using the other arm. Hey, this is the one that's being held up over our head where we can actually see it. <laughs> and then we reduce the weight on the one above that. Are you okay? It doesn't have to be quite as severe as you might think, but here, you can see that we have a lot of extra weight here, but we don't have very much, we have a little too much weight here, so we're just going to reduce that just a touch. Don't need to reduce it that much, just enough to give us a little bit of volume. And now, when we rotate this arm, it creases. Of course, it doesn't crease in quite the manner I might like, so we have to adjust that until it works right. And there's a lot of ways to get around to adjusting that. Uh, one of the ways is to take this guy here and increase the weight paint here, since this is going to be our here, since this is going to be where we need to have the pop through nut work. And normally, you'd consider deleting the arm inside of this particular mesh. Uh, but we haven't done so yet. And here we need to have more control over this region, I think. Well, there, here we are. Now, one of the problems is that I didn't give us very much density around the elbow, which was a mistake on my part. And if I was doing this for reals, I would go back in and increase the density by adding another, another edge loop there. All right, so there we go. And uh, if we rotate, you can see that it brings over along with the rotation. We've got more pop in. So we'll have to decide exactly what we want to do with that. But the core idea behind any system of that is determining, determining which of these is the problematic bone. And in, that case, in this case, it's the forearm, because the forearm is exerting too much control over these particular points. So we're just going to reduce that, like so. And you can continue to um, do as you like. So 
we really need to add. Let's go ahead and just add in another edge loop here. Come on. Oh, I see. Do you, um, how about there? Uh, and then another one on this side. I don't want to accidentally put it in a different spot. Is that the right spot? No, no, it's here. All right. And with that added loop cut, we should have significantly fewer problems with our deformation, and, uh, and that'll be an advantage for us. All right, so you can see how this all starts to work together pretty well. And to give you a basic idea of how it ends up looking, uh, and I haven't really done all of the polishing that you'd normally do when you were building this sort of thing, but I've done enough that you should be able to see um, the basics of what's going on. And, uh, and that means that what will happen is, if you've got a character that's moving around, well, for example, dancing, Yeah, we definitely need some more, some more controls on exactly what's happening there. I think that, let's go back to paint mode just for a second here and fill these in. Actually want to lower it there. There we are. Nah, whatever. Um, and then we can animate in the actual part of the jacket such that it moves logically with the nature of the jump. and you can end up getting quite a nice little look to it. So, for example, we move this back and move this forward. Then <clears throat> turn off white painting so we can see it, and then smooth it out. And you can see that what we have is a fairly convincing set of wrinkles. Now there are some work that needs to be done because we've got some pop through, and as I mentioned, normally I would recommend deleting large portions of the body, but this will work fine, and the result is that you get some really nice wrinkles. Uh, and if you feel like not deleting the body, but instead having one base body that you put stuff on top of, you're going to have a really hard time with thin clothes, um, but you can get away with it with thick clothes by simply widening them in those regions, so for example, I could continue to bulk out here and you can see that that got rid of it. So there we are. That's uh, one way to do these things and you can create much more severe wrinkles simply by painting more severe wrinkles in. So it's up to you how you would like to do it. But the basic idea is that this looks a lot more realistic than uh, you'd get with just standard mesh clone modeling. And that allows us to do very, very good feeling animations, uh, animations that feel real, like they've got some serious energy to them. And you can see that right, right now already. Uh, you've got this jumping animation, and uh, or this jumping pose, and the jumping pose already feels more natural and organic because it's got this here. And that even can be done over the course of the jump. You can modify that so that it, you know, it. Uh, goes up and down depending on where you are and that gives you a little bit of energy to your jump. Uh, if you're going to do that though you should paint this with a more of a taper to it so that you get a real sharp taper. Uh, for example you might do it like you might really strengthen it down at the bottom here. And that way you'd get a real feel for it as it uh, as it popped, you know, instead of it looking kind of mediocre. There we go. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and that's it.